<laughs> now see me smiling. Welcome to the show. It's Rosa Del Sides. Once again, it's so good to have you. You know, I walk into the studio feeling like so melancholy, so lost. But you know, thinking that you're going to be out there and me here, of course. <laughs> Just change the mood. That's pretty good, isn't it? Okay, so today's the 7th of November. Do you know that since the 1st of November, we moved from 175 to channel 458 on Sky? I'm going to have to get used to that because I'm so used to that number 175. It's so easy, you know, 175. But now it's one, I mean, it's 458. Odd numbers. Two evil numbers and one odd number. Okay, I'm going to try. 458 on Sky UK. So we've moved from 175 to 458. And I must let you know this. 8 o'clock today, we're going to be having a special program with the CEO of Ben Television, that Mr. Alistair Shiodi. This November also is quite a peculiar month, isn't it? Ben Television will be completing 21 years. We've been broadcasting now for 21 years. Imagine a young man of 21 years. He owns the world. The world is at his feet. He's going places. So with this celebration, with the celebration of, NT, of Ben Television at 21, we'll be opening our doors for you to come in and make contributions so that we can continue with you know the marvelous program we're bringing to your doorstep practically pleading for you to be part of this because our contribution is invaluable in the afro um, caribbean community i mean give it to ben tv we've made so much contribution it's not easy having a broadcast television surviving this long in the united kingdom and we've been doing that you know so we, we've reached a point where we we're saying please come join us and support us fully the best way that you can okay did i say november is a special month yes it is tomorrow is the panache global entertainment awards and yes we were nominated I've been talking about this. We're nominated for Astounding Achievement in Media and our contribution to the community. So yes, that's it. Outstanding Achievement in Media, Entertainment, and our community support. Rosen Allsides, hooray, hippie skippy, and all of that. So tomorrow we're going to be there, live, fully representing, and hopefully we are going to take that award. We're going to bring it here. And of course, have you celebrate with us. Okay, so that's an aside. And something else I would like um, to bring to your notice. During the week, maybe yesterday or two days ago, it was in the news that Ovleria, I don't know if you know her, she's the um, wife of Chikaike, that's Chief Zibudaya, in the new masquerade, you remember, in the 80s. The sitcoms in the 80s on NTA network servers and the early 90s. So it was rumored that she was dead. But hey, it is not true. And I don't know how we tend to peddle such wrong information. I was actually a victim of that because I actually thought she was dead. I checked it up on social media. I saw it on um, Pulse Niger on the nation's newspaper. And I was like, is this really true? So anyway... Chief Zabudaya, the on-screen husband of um, Ovleria, said that um, who is wishing her dead, that he can tell us that Ovleria is not dead. You can call on the telephone and she will speak to you. Wishing her dead means that she would live longer. And hallelujah. I mean, a whole lot of people were upset because she has... Um, some of her children live in the UK and occasionally she travels down to the UK to spend time with them. So... She's hell and hearty. She's got lovely kids who are looking after her and she's not dead. And it just makes you wonder. It's like fake news seems to be ruling over our beloved country, Nigeria. So we just have to watch it, especially as um, media practitioners. Okay, now let's move on to Genevieve's Lion's Arts during the week. You know, we were excited like last week that um, the movie was nominated on the foreign category of the Oscar Awards. We were excited. Beautiful movie. Streaming on Netflix. I saw it, and especially that it was um, 
dedicated to the late Amaka Igwe. I was excited over that. But then the bad news hit us this week that um, Oscars disqualified the Lion Heart for certain reasons. And of course, this is one of the reasons. Let me read this to you. And sadly, it is our problem in Nigeria. He said the Oscar is an American award. The foreign language category is for films made predominantly in other languages besides English. It is clearly stated that every film nominated in that category, um, yes, it's for foreign language. But sadly, you know, it was only 11% Igbo language. And the rest of it was in English. So there was absolutely no way that it would have qualified one. And secondly, the committee in Nigeria represented or responsible for nominating movies actually really messed up this time around. And, but that is not the first thing I would love to say about the brilliant filmmaker who is part of that team that... Um, um, Femi Odubemi, I actually contacted him and I wanted him to give us a Skype interview. He should talk to us how we missed it this time around. He hasn't yet responded to my message, but definitely I'll be looking forward to like, you know, taking him up on this. Why did we submit this movie when it did not fit into the category? And then Genevieve went on saying this, everybody went on saying that, and then she's playing the victim card. If it does not fit into the category, it doesn't fit into it. So why are we breaking our heads? That's that for that. We're going to be going for a break. And when we come back, I have a special interview with the president of the Buccaneers Confraternity European Chapter. Okay, so that's it. If you're just watching or joining us, it is Rose on all sides. My name is Rose Peter Graham. You know, there are some, some um, social organization that we really do not understand in our society. We judge them, we frown at them, we come up with our own reservation. But you know, it's good when, you know, they come out and they they befriend us. They try to let us know this is what we're really all about beyond, you know, what we assume. So it's, it's really with great privilege. I'm actually yeah, happy that I'm having you here with me to shine more lights on your organization. With me is Christopher Indubisi. He is the president of Buccaneers Confraternity. Europe chapter, and there's something called the Galleon Master, the Omega Galleon. What is this? Well, firstly, uh, Rose, thanks for having me on your show uh, to tell our own side of the story. Okay. Um, uh, every organization has got its own balance in terms of how it speaks mm -hmm. and how they operate. Yes. Uh, uh, our organization has its own. It's, it's not peculiar to us alone. Every other organization has, ha have theirs. So uh, a galleon we refer to as a regional uh, geographical expanse. <laughs> so with respect to the European geographical expanse, it's referred to as Omega Galleon. And by the grace of God, I happen to okay. be... Okay, Omega Galleon. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Okay. See, let's, your organization is... Um, is it a secret cult? No, we are not a secret cult. And uh, it's preposterous to think that we are. But you know, when people hear the name Buccaneers, it's, it sends chills across their, down their spine, you know, and then in the society, they are deemed as outlaws. They are found out. If you delve back into history, uh, you will find that actually there were a group of men who yes. were Buccaneers. And that name was chosen specifically because of the historical impact it made at the time. Okay. Uh, and, and the impact it makes now is with respect to the principle that we're borrowing from history to address uh, part of the uh, influence we want to have in the society today. Tell me, someone who really doesn't know what the Buccaneers is about, what is this organization about? Right, so we are a, a collection of like-minded gentlemen. We 
have uh, a, a very huge approach towards self-development. Okay. We have a huge appetite for charity. Uh, our objectives uh, are encompassed in that zeal to improve the environment where we find ourselves in. Okay. So we operate in what we would call a hub and spoke model, which is where uh, you have a central core and mm -hmm. you have the different regional mm -hmm. uh, parts to it who have various levels of autonomy mm -hmm. to address the local variations of the environment they find themselves in. So take for example, here in the United Kingdom, Omega Galeon has got its own level of autonomy to address the local variations of the contemporary issues we deal with okay. here within, within, within uh, the European society. How are um, you addressing this? So we are addressing this in, in several ways. Um, first of all, worth mentioning that our strategic aims and vision uh, can be uh, encapsulated in four different objectives. One is that we want to build uh, gentlemen who uh, are absolutely ideal within the society who are uh, built with the right kind of ethos and who understand the bigger picture. That's one. Secondly, we want to be able to impact on the society through corporate social responsibilities. Thirdly, we want to dig within the talent pool that we have to develop ourselves better and to develop the society as well. Think about that Latin uh, maxim, mm -hmm. cogito ego sum. It means I think, therefore I am. Okay. For me, that encapsulates the very nature of our being and what we should aspire to, that every one of us should, yeah. in every way, be able to uh, explore the extremities of uh, the, the God-given talents in order to be a proper homo sapien. And that's exactly what we try to achieve. So we have built several controls within our organization to be able to achieve these. When I came into... Uh, 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 play as the president for the European chapter, I brought in four different committees to address exactly these strategic aims. And so also do the different regional uh, representatives we have, have their own ways of addressing this, because the whole idea is that we all have a direct line of sight to the global vision that we have. Sorry, how long has the European version been? It's been here on? since 2009. Uh, since, 2000, uh, since 1999, sorry, not 2009. That's some time? Yes, that has been some time. Okay. And we and have been delivering several charity walks with different prestigious organizations for more than a decade and a half. We participate in the London 10 kilometer run year in, year out for different organizations, name them, Diabetes UK, British Heart Foundation, Save the Children, uh, uh, Anthony Nolan Trust. Okay. Why are you doing all of this? Because um, is it like the focus, the vision for, the, for you coming together? Our focus can be um, seen in, it's a spectrum. Uh, our focus fits into several aspects of our spectrum. No, you know why I'm asking you, because I'm, I'm not yet concluded with that question because you're big on charity I applaud that I have seen the things you do in Nigeria here in the UK and, and all across the world where you guys are and um, is it because you're trying to change the notion every mm. organization needs to mm. aspire to be co a corporate social uh, global citizen and we are not any different from it. Name it. It is ethically right for us to be able to um, eck our own footprints on the sands of time in the right ways. So if that then in itself finds a way of uh, giving us that yeah. double assurance and gives us that value to help people understand and perceive us rightly, then so be it. You see, Chimamanda Adichie called some of these the danger of the single story. When individuals begin to have a tunneled vision of a particular individual or an organization, it creates the wrong kind of impression because then all you know about that person is what you know. And the media, being rife with a lot of sensationalism, yeah. will be able to take on what is sensational without necessarily 
digging deep to actually understand the content. You know, of you know I, I like that name, Brothers Across Nigeria. Yeah. I mean, it sounds nice. It sounds all encompassing. Yeah. Like these are people who are looking yeah. out for themselves, yeah. you know. And then you hear that name also comes the Buccaneers. Yeah. I mean, in, in Unilad, where I had my higher institution, I remember some of them being in Shudain Day, and they said, oh, you know that guy? And I was contested. Oh, you have to go and see this group. You have to see that group. You have to see. And I'm like, okay, so I have to meet with these guys. Because this, I mean, it's not an idea that I had, but this is what we hear and see them when, when we see clashes in the higher institutions. No, so, so why do we have those? So to correct the impression, there, are no, there is no Bucanias confraternity in Nigeria. Okay. What we have registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission is Brothers Across Nigeria. We do not operate as Bucaneers Confraternity in Nigeria. We have an editable database, membership database, that can be interrogated at any particular point in time to clearly expel, explain who is a member and who isn't. Outside the shores of Nigeria, we operate as Bucaneers Confraternity, duly registered and lawful. Mm. Why aren't you registered as Buccaneers in Nigeria? It was a strategic decision. And that strategic decision was known to the leaders at the time. And um, every organization would, from time to time, address issues based on the uh, impacts of the, of the society where they're living. So it was a strategic decision at the time, and, and that was taken. And it was well welcomed. Who are eligible to be members? Everybody who is a graduate uh, from any part of the country. It's all in our website. The strengths of the members across Europe? Well, uh, we, we are quite, um, uh, uh, quite large here in, the, in, in Europe, uh, and we number into uh, quite a lot, actually, which is what gives us the strength in what we do, because when we then focus on doing some works of charity, we're able to create the right kind of impact and ripple that is needed. Okay, so we have the Buccaneers, Brothers across Nigeria, we have the um, Aye. This is some other brotherhood group, and then we also have the the Pirates Confraternity. Are they the Aye's? I so God help help me here. I <laughs> wouldn't be able to speak for any other. But what, but what I would want to know is, mm -hmm. do is there a relationship between your organization with all the other brotherhoods? We don't necessarily have any relationship with them. In fact, we don't. Uh, we don't in any way relate with them on any grounds of confraternal relationships. We exist on our own. We are insular and we are absolutely self-sustaining. Um, so if an individual from one organization has friends in, in other organizations, then that's a separate matter. But from a confraternal point of view, um, we don't have any such associations, I'm sorry. Is there a f an unknown field no, written no, on no, written? Absolutely, absolutely not. The demands and challenges of the present 21st century are not as um, rudimentary as having a feud between confraternities. So we, 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 don't, we don't engage in that. So then there are no intra-brotherhood activities then? No, we haven't explored those. Um, we have our own peculiarities, we have our own vision, we think our vision is self-sustaining within ourselves, we think we have the um, membership strength to do so. We are a highly disciplined organization, which is why when we mold individuals, we mold them according to regimented discipline. We cannot speak for other organizations in terms of how they uh, lay out the terrain for themselves and how they explore whatever the objectives might be. Okay, so a quick search of um, the Buccaneers online, you would get uh, different groups laying claim to be the authentic organization. Uh, is there factions so, so like I within said, the Buccaneers? So, so like I said, we have a database of all members of my organization. Okay. And that database can be interrogated to know who is who. Okay. I mean, what you're saying to me looks like me getting my phone and bringing out Beyonce's picture and tell you I'm Beyonce's secret lover. <laughs> I mean, that would be, that, that be absolutely preposterous. So, um, Don't uh, worry, the internet will welcome it. <laughs>
So uh, yeah. to answer your question, no. Um, there's mm -hmm. only one organization which okay. we subscribe to. There's a brothers across Nigeria as we operate in Nigeria. There's a Buccaneers confraternity in every other part of the world. And we're all duly registered within the laws of each of the countries, the host countries where we exist. Okay, there's something called um, the New Moon, Happy New Moon. I think I have that logo somewhere. Happy New Moon. I saw that. I'm like, what is this? The worship of the moon? Uh, something. But, but, but you know, you've said that these things are peculiar to you guys. And I saw that. I was like, Happy New Moon. And I'm wondering, what is that about? So um, I alluded earlier in, yes. in the conversation that mm -hmm. every organization would have its own terminologies and parlance. Okay. Uh, a moon means the month. So that was simply saying happy new month, you know, and that must have been for this new month that's just started. So it was, it was nothing um, cryptic about it. It was <laughs> simply our own way of saying, hey guys, happy new month. <laughs> happy new moon. <laughs> Like having the Chinese New Year sometime no. in January or... Well, it's... The, Do you guys have a New Year? No, like, we, we, we don't have a New Year. We subscribe to the... Uh, to the normal ca the general uh, calendar? The normal calendar, yeah. Okay. We don't have a New Year, no. Okay, that, that's, that's good, Chris, because, you know, there are certain things about your organization that a lot of people tend to find strange. Things like, <laughs> you know, before, but for you, what, what would you tell me really is the vision? What do you believe in? I was coming to that because of the, the new moon aspect of it. Like, what do you, do you guys believe in God? Of course we do. Oh gosh, we do. Then what does, you know, being part of it, they talk about some certain things that happened during the initiation process and being part of the... So it's pretty, it's pretty open. Uh, uh, the link to the organization is out there on the internet. You click on it for membership. It takes you right to another so, page. So we don't have the situation whereby everyone tends to land a punch? Excuse me? <laughs> on the new person coming in? Excuse me? <laughs> like I said earlier, the demands of the 21st century aren't as uh, archaic and rudimentary as uh, bravado uh, as practiced in the, in the 15th century. Okay. So what we tend to want to get out of any new member is an understanding of the bigger picture and where we're headed. And so you do a psychometric test, you okay. go through several uh, intellectual discussions and debates to kind of get out the best out of you. And that's where, that's, that's, that's how we, and it's not clandestine. Right now, you're the new president on board. How long is the time? It's usually a two year tenure. Where are you taking this organization? What, what's your, your, your vision? How is it different from, you know, the, the, well, the Gillian master? Yeah, that's it. Who was the, there before? The, the former Gillian master. <laughs> right. So, so, as you would know, every organization would have their own set of objectives. Mm -hmm. Like that, we have ours. And have we achieved everything? No, we haven't. But we have achieved at various levels of maturity. Our achievements on the different aspects of our objectives are at varying levels. Now, when I came on board, I am passionate about self-development. I just, I just talked about Cogito Ego Sum. And yes. my passion is to ensure that every individual within my organization um, is able to uh, explore the extremities of his God-given talents, which is why one of the fundamental committees that I have is the Empowerment Committee. Also, a fundamental principle we have is that beyond the skin, the arguments of creed, the arguments of color, the arguments of ethnic extraction, the arguments of race, all those cease to exist. What does that mean to an organization? This is why we go all out. If you check our, 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 our website, it says membership is open to anybody from any country who is a graduate. But not women. Well, because it's a male organization. Just like every, several, some other organizations can have, have male. Uh, Do you uh, have women approaching you and like, they want to be part of? None know? has approached me. I wouldn't know if any has approached any of my brothers or <laughs> colleagues. Well, none has approached but me. But if, if one did? Well, if there is need to um, evaluate the need for uh, women membership, then that will be a strategic decision to be taken. It would need to be debated. It would need to be analyzed. It would, the value of it would need to be well articulated. And should that be the case? Men just like to throw their weight around, don't they? Well, 
<laughs> you will have other women dominated organizations as well mm. so who, who also do mm -hmm. similar kind of um, um, work that we do and, and okay. who have similar kind of bond amongst themselves so um, I don't find it any different it's it's just um, a group of male uh, 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 corporate citizens coming together to want to bond and to want to improve upon themselves and in improve upon themselves they want to impact positively on the more on your vision yeah yeah, I want you to talk to us more. So more on my vision, yeah. I've talked about um, mm -hmm. self-development. Yes. And the next bit then is to talk about um, the corporate social responsibility that we want to. Um, actually, next week, in addition to all the good works that we've been doing over yes. a decade and a half, mm -hmm. we will be in a conversation with um, Save the Children. So actually, partner with them to go down to Nigeria to actually yes. deliver on some programs. We okay. would like to be able to go in and take out a kid from a modeler's baby's home and train the kid up from nursery up to university. That would be an achievement. Okay. And these are the sort of things that we're looking at. That's pretty good. And um, one of the things I noticed when I was doing my research before, you know, this interview, I noticed that you actually um, lend your voice to the genus xenophobic yes, um, we did. you know acts in South Africa yes, that was pretty good thank you it's humane and I applaud you for that thank you very much it's good keep doing good keep doing what you're doing thank you and I want to say thank you very much for coming on the show thanks, thanks. a lot Rose <laughs> thanks for having us okay so I have been speaking with Chris Indubisi the president Bucaneers Confraternity the Galleon Master European chapter Omega Gillian Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Okay, so we're going on a break. And of course, when we come back, we'll be meeting the first ever Mr. and Miss Teen Nigeria UK. you love to meet them. Want to know why I use SendWave? Because it's easy like sending a text. Send money instantly from your cell phone 24 7 with no fees attached if you download and sign up. Oh, share. <laughs> Look like a supermodel with beautiful virgin hair products. The best real hair, guaranteed. With Pape and Camille Beauty Hair. Pape and Camille Beauty Hair Products. Four pack Brazilian plus closure for £90. Special offer, Brazilian hair, 8 inches for £10, 10 inches for £12, 12 inches for £15. Lace wig frontal, 10 inches, starts from just £55. Find these and other great deals with 100% guaranteed human hair at the Papa and Camille store in Brixton. Hop into our Brixton store today or go online with free next day delivery at pchairlimited.com. With Papa and Camille, you have the freedom to be really gorgeous. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, the newest home away from home in the Nigerian hospital.